All right, now let's go ahead and tackle our last method of how to solve linear equations simultaneously. We're going to use the inverse matrix method. Now, you may say, well, why, don't, why do you want to do that? If you take a look at this equation, then right away you can see that you have a minus 3y in the first and a plus 3y in the second, and that would definitely lead itself to simply adding the two equations, eliminating y, and so you can say that the elimination method for this particular example is by far the best method to use. However, there are some very good reasons why sometimes we want to use the inverse matrix method, so let's go ahead and take this example and apply it to that particular method. Now, what is a matrix? Well, a matrix is something that kind of looks like a determinant. And again, it takes the coefficients on the variables and puts them in there. So we're going to call a matrix called the A matrix and plug in there the coefficients of the x and the y variables. So this is a 1, a negative 3, a 4, and a 3. So I'm defining a matrix, matrix A, as the coefficients of the x and y the variables. I'm also defining a matrix B, which is equal to the constants on the right side of the equal sign, negative 1 and 11. And then I'm going to define a third matrix called the matrix X, capital X, which is simply a matrix of X and Y. And, of course, with matrix multiplication, it then shows that if you take A, the A matrix times the X matrix. Oop, let me get rid of that little dot right here. So don't get confused. Uh, that should then equal the B matrix. And it turns out that this is an exact mathematical representation of these two variables. In other words, if I take the matrix A, which is 1, 4, negative 3, and 3, and multiply it times the matrix of X and Y, that should equal the matrix of B, which is negative 1 and 11. And the way matrix mathematics works is when you multiply this matrix by this matrix, you take the 1 and multiply times x, so you get 1x. Then you take the minus 3 and the y, so you get minus 3y, and that equals the first element right here, which is minus 1. Here you take the 4 times the x, and you add that to the 3 times the y, and that gives you the element in this matrix, which is 11. And notice that this is exactly the same as what you have over there. So that shows that this representation gives you the exact same two equations, which is, of course, not yet the solution to this problem. The next thing we can do then, and let me get rid of that, is we can multiply both sides of this matrix multiplication by the inverse of A. And as you can see in the title, we're going to use the inverse matrix method, so we need an inverse of a matrix. We're going to multiply the left side by the inverse of A, which is written as A minus 1 times A times X equals, and I multiply the right side by the inverse of A. And with matrices, you have to make sure that you keep the correct order. Now, it turns out that with matrices, when you multiply a matrix by its inverse, you get what we call the identity matrix, which is I times x, which is the inverse of a times b. And finally, we should know, if we have dealt with matrices before, that when you multiply a matrix by the identity matrix, you just get the matrix back. It's like multiplying a number by 1. If you multiply 5 by 1, you get 5. If you multiply x by the identity matrix, you get x. So this sim simply says that x is equal to the inverse of a times b. And since x is the matrix of x and y, that means to find x and y, all I have to do is to multiply the inverse of a times b. Which means all I have to do is find the inverse of a, and then take that and multiply times b, and I get the x and the y, which means the solution to this particular problem. So all we have to do is find the inverse of a. Well, what does that mean, all we have to do is find the inverse of a? Well, let me show you how to find the inverse of a matrix. So we're going to use this. So let me erase that now. And let me write on the end here so we can say that the X matrix is equal to the inverse of A times the matrix B. So how do you find the inverse of A? Well, if I have a 2 by 2 matrix, and this is what we call a 2 by 2 matrix, so there's two rows, two columns, so it's a 2 by 2 matrix, it's kind of straightforward. 
the inverse of A is defined as 1 over the determinant of that matrix times this matrix by reversing those two elements. So put the 3 up here and the 1 down here and changing the sign of those two, which becomes a positive 3 and a negative 4. So what that means is we're going to take 1 divided by the determinant and multiplying times the same matrix, but with these two elements exchanged and by changing the sign of those two elements. So we write the 3 up here and the 1 down here, and instead of a negative 3, we write a positive 3. Instead of a positive 4, we write a negative 3. And remember, the determinant of any matrix can be written as 1, negative 3, 4, and 3. And by definition, the determinant can be found by multiplying those two elements together, which is a 1 and a 3, and subtracting from that when you multiply those two elements together, which is a 4 and a negative 3. There we go. And so this is equal to 3 plus 12 or 15. So that means that the determinant of that matrix is 15. In other words, then, that the inverse of the matrix is equal to 1 over 15 times 3, 3, negative 4, and 1. We have now found the inverse of that matrix, which means that x and y can be found by taking that inverse of the matrix and multiplying times the B matrix. So that means that x, which can be written as the x and the y values, is equal to the inverse of the matrix, which is 1 over 15 times 3, 3, negative 4, and 1, and multiplying that times the B matrix, which is negative 1 and 11. Remember, the B matrix is simply the, the constants on the right side of the equations, of the equal signs. Now we have to multiply these two matrices, and to do that, this is equal to 1 over 15 times 3 times a negative 1, 3 times a negative 1, plus 3 times 11. Notice what I'm doing. I'm moving my left finger across like this, and I'm moving my right finger down. So it's this number times this number, plus this number times this number. And for the second element here, we take this number times this number, which is minus 4 times negative 1, and adding it to this number times this number. Remember, you move the left hand to the right, you move the right hand down. So here you get 3 times negative 1 plus 3 times 11. Here you get negative 4 times negative 1 plus 1 times 11. And so this is equal to 1 over 15 times... So this is negative 3 plus 33, which is 30. And here we get 4 plus 11, which is 15. And now we can go ahead and multiply 115 times each of those two. So that's like 30 divided by 15, which is 2. And 15 divided by 15, which is 1. And as we said before, those are the x and the y values of the place where the two lines cross. So our solution here would be 2 and 1. That's the solution to the two equations. That's where they cross. Just to make sure we did it correctly, let's go ahead and plug those two numbers back into x and y. So if we take x minus 3y equals negative 1, if I plug in 2 for x, 1 for y, do I get negative 1? 2 minus 3 is indeed negative 1. That's correct. The second equation, 4x plus 3y equals 11. Plug in 2 for x, 1 for y, so that's 4 times 2 plus 3 times 1 is 11, or 8 plus 3 is indeed 11. Oop, I'm a little ahead of myself, but my check mark, yes, it's equal to 11, and yes, that's correct, so that's the correct solution to this problem. I bet you don't like this method, but it's an intriguing method, and again, there are all kinds of good applications uh, in business and in mathematics where they utilize this kind of methodology to solve linear equations. Usually it's not used for using, uh, to find a solution for a two by two, but at least this will help us learn the technique of how to do that. 